Every time I get told a place is gonna be dangerous, I get there and it's not at all. And it's starting to make me think that most places, within reason, are worth going to. So I've decided to test my theory. In Iraq. I'm in Iraq, if that wasn't obvious. Why Iraq, you might ask? Because it's fun, dude. This guy, huh? You think you know what Iraq is like. But I promise you, you don't. It's actually pretty easy to get to. All you need is a plane ticket. And it's way more, quote, normal than you would ever expect. And most importantly, it's an amazing place to visit. It was the birthplace to civilization with an amazing culture and very cool people. Even if you're just looking to kick back and relax, I'm gonna show you the side of Iraq they don't talk about on the news. Oh God. <laughs> All right, but seriously, why Iraq? And the answer is because we can. Up until right now, you weren't allowed to go there. It's the first time ever that, or at least in my lifetime, that federal Iraq has been a place that you can go and get a visa on arrival. It means you don't have to do anything in advance. You just book your flight, you show up, hey, what's up? And uh, you can do it. In Iraq, there's federal Iraq, and then there's Kurdistan, which is sort of like an autonomous region. That essentially means it's like a country without being a country. People there are like, I'm from Kurdistan, but it's technically part of Iraq, whatever, it doesn't matter. That's always been a place that everybody can go. But federal Iraq, the Iraq that we all know and love, has been sort of closed off for foreigners without some like crazy process. But now me, you, your grandmother, everybody can go. We think it's gonna be very chill and very easy and we're looking forward to it. Wish me luck and uh, it's almost 9 a.m. We're about to board. We're doing it, you know? It's easy to talk a bunch of shit about how it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be fine, and if, I still believe that, but now I'm actually going, and now you get, you know, the jitters, and is it probably completely safe to go to? Yes. Does I, is ISIS still active in the country? Yes. Like, these are not, that's not ideal. It might, you know, they might be sort of banished to the brinks of the desert, their spirit has been broken, but they're still there. They're still up to no good. And that's not perfect, but I believe in, in the mission. You know, I love doing this shit. I think that we're gonna have a lot of fun. We have made it. We're in Basra, we're at our hotel. And on the way in, it was like literally, I don't even want to say it didn't look like how you think it would look. It was just like desert and oil burning, which I think is just a thing, right? What is that? The, it was oil burning in a way that looked like it was happening intentionally. Yeah, yeah. And there's just like a ton of flags and pictures of religion. We are in Iraq. But the same token, that doesn't necessarily make it mean that everybody's like, unapproachable people have been cool the reception guy just goes will smith and he was showing me videos of himself working out like just a, a video of him holding a dumbbell and going i love will smith man <laughs> that's like that's fucking dope <laughs> Your boy. <laughs> Let me see more pics, dude. We started following each other on Instagram and he immediately started hitting me with Will Smith comments. You gotta hit him with a follow. His Instagram is turned. First things first, we need to meet up with the people who are gonna show us around Iraq. <laughs> Sajad, Aya, 
and Ahmed. Recently, that. Ahmed and Aya started a travel company called Safradi that's really taken off. I found them on social media. They're killing it, by the way. You can find them all over Instagram and Iraqi TV. They're also newlyweds. How did you guys start doing tours? It was my idea. We were just, uh, we were just like friends. Tomorrow we will have free time when we go to the shrine because women are not allowed to come. I swear he's lying. So we he's will, lying. We'll talk about stuff. We'll talk about what really happened. You never trust a man, you know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, you can't find like a girl like in the age of Aya now in Iraq is a tour guide. Right. No. Nope. Not right. even old. Not even old. Right. So you know Ahmed, Sajad, Aya. None of these people are even 25 years old yet. You're 23. Yes, I'm 21, 21. And you're 24. Yes. Yeah, so you guys He's are like. The oldest. You guys are like babies. Like when I was 24, I was a fucking loser, dude. By American standards, they're like children. And here are these people pushing the narrative of the story of their country. It's like very, very impressive. If you want to know a country, you should like meet the young people, the young generation who's going to lead the future. So I believe in that, not because I'm young, I'm saying this, but that's the truth. You know, like, like the fact that we sat in an, in an administrative meeting today. Even you, though you didn't understand yeah, anything, no only no on idea. Instagram. Yeah, no, 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 Instagram. <laughs> I, yeah. Of course, the one time we don't bring the camera, something insane unfolds. <laughs> we went to a museum. And we're like, ah, oh, it's gonna be a museum, like we don't need the camera, right? But very quickly, we get kind of herded into this museum board meeting where like Sajad, Ahmed, and Aya are all, all of a sudden involved in this discussion about the future of the museum and how to get art and get the word out. And then I just heard Instagram and I was like, oh, they're like, they're te you're teaching, you're showing them. And I was really impressed because they looked like old fashioned people yeah, and they were, they were listening to you guys. Yeah. It's a rare thing when the government listens to young people. I told them, like he, he said, this is the manager of media in Nazareth. I said, yeah, what's up? I'm working like since 2019 and nobody cares about my work. Yeah. In front of his face. He said, oh, okay. Okay, why not? We will work together. Like these are people on the cutting edge of like how to show people Iraq in the best way. Then a couple minutes later, we were presented with like a ceremonial award. It's the first time I've ever gotten a gift at a museum. I appreciate it. Thank you. With a corresponding photo shoot that then later that evening ended up on Facebook. Receiving this thing, like shaking the museum curator's hand. And then the translation from Arabic is really funny. It's like the tourist delegation. Like, <laughs> And on the walk over to receive our gifts, some guy kind of appears on my side. Did you guys see this one, that one little guy walked up next to me? Like, yeah. Like all secretive. He speaks English? Yeah, he was, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's up? He goes, I love America. Oh my God. <laughs> Why are you saying it backwards? I know, he said it all sneaky. I was like, dude, you're being mad sneaky. <laughs> it just reminded me of the way when I'm walking around New York, New York City, somebody's like, Dude, you want to buy some weed? You want to buy? And then he goes, uh, he goes. I love to show blacklist. You ever watch blacklist? It's serious blacklist. I love it. Oh, Ahmed is crazy about blacklist. <laughs> it's a series. He always keeps me watch it, watch it. I said, no, I don't take. It. I don't watch anything that you recommend. <laughs> black Mirror? No, no it's no, a blacklist. No, no. Blacklist it's is called different. series. Yeah. Black Mirror is good too, though. Did you see the Purge? The bur the purge. Yeah, the series. I've I never, like I haven't watched it. No, it's good. It's scary, yeah, right? It's good. I, I, for for us, uh, cool. horror movies is nothing it's for horror. Iraqis. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's different. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> <laughs> you be terrifying and we be laughing. That's it's crazy. very different. That's crazy. I love America also. I wish lived there. 
Hey, you can't take me. <laughs> yeah, some day come through, bro. It's okay. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Mortal. Julio. You're welcome. welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate Bye -bye. you. Thanks. This was not unusual. People were excited to see and meet Americans. RIPX, dude. <laughs> hey, want your channel in YouTube. <laughs> There's like uh, a myth about Iraq and Iraq that they don't like Americans or they have problems. They don't have a, a problem with Americans, but with the governments. This particular guy seemed to have no issues with our government. Biden, John Biden. People were so excited to see us and to meet us. They were just excited to be on camera. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I want to be famous. Thank you. I want to Hawaii, Hawaii. You want to see? A lot of pictures. Yeah, yeah, good ones. A couple of the kids took their chances of being a little naughty on the big screen. There's been a dozen times where people have just given us shit for free. And it's not even like coming up to you and giving you stuff. It's like you go to buy something the way you would anywhere. And then the transaction's about to conclude. You go to give them money and they go, and like in situations where you would never expect that. Like a taxi driver would not accept our money. And actually this was an unmarked taxi. So I felt terrible after, because at first I was just like, is this sketchy? And then we get in the car and the guy very calmly just goes, where are you from? And I was like, oh, New York. He goes, oh, New York. <laughs> and then that was it. And then when we leave, I go, how much? He goes, no, 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 no. I'm like, no, dude, please, Bro. please. He goes, welcome. A taxi driver you would think is the person who takes your money no matter what, apparently not. That's the part of hospitality in Iraq. Everyone here in Iraq, I was like, oh no, take care of me, I'll do anything for you for free. Bro, That's this, is, this is not how things go on, you know? When you're going to the, to the shop or anything, to the market, small markets, they won't let you pay. Especially if you are a foreigner. Do, okay. do you want to see some currencies or not? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, like old stuff? Uh, oh, wow, that's crazy. Was got, yeah. That's cool. Do they sell those? Yeah, they, they sell How much is it to buy one? It's a gift for you. Uh, I, really? Yes. Yeah, I can't. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're the man. Thank you. See, I told you. He just wouldn't accept my money. Uh, which, it's crazy, right? What's that? He also tried to give me a carpet. <laughs> Carpets? Uh, I, can't, I don't have room for it in my bag. Otherwise, I would. You guys ship it? I don't need a carpet, though. But I appreciate it, man. Thank you. New York. Nice Everyone to wanted to know where we were Take from, care. and they were just curious about us in general. This thing too, or this on the left? Like, very curious. Oh, she's curious. Every single place we went, people were shocked and excited to see tourists. People were not shy either. They were happy to come up and just start talking to you. We were sitting in a coffee shop and this kid just came over and introduced himself. He essentially told me he wanted to come say hi because I was the first American he had ever seen. This is the first time you've ever seen an American? It's the first time in my life. Really? I don't speak with Americans really much because I don't see them in my country. Right. They all think that we are terrorists and something. But... Yeah, I'm from New York. And you, you, you said you want to go there someday? I wish to. Yeah, yeah. You speak very good English. Thank you. Yeah. I learned it when I was seven from video games, you know. <laughs> what uh, what games? Let's say uh, GTA games. And, yeah. Yeah, Clash. Nice. That's, that's kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. What's your Instagram? Yeah, it's not not Julio. N O T. Dude, what was the what were the two phrases you taught us before? Shlonik. Shlonik. Shlonik is what? How are How you? How are you? How are you? Shlonik. <laughs> All right, so I know people are going to ask this question. They're going to be like, "Are the how have the police treated you and stuff?" Because there's a lot of there's a lot of checkpoints, and they've, they're very nice. This guy, yeah, huh? <laughs> awesome. Shook it on. He's got a good smile. This guy. Smile. I don't know English. He's terrible. This guy's fucking with you. Like right when we got to the country, 
you know, first time in Iraq, you know, you don't know what to expect. You're, it's a little intimidating at least. And the police were fucking with us, which is hilarious. That's such a funny thing to do. So the guy looks at my passport and then he looks at me and he goes, and he goes, just fuck it, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, dude, that is very fucking funny. Immediately puts you at ease. Uh, and even if though we get stopped by the police a lot, just cause they're like, what the fuck is this? Like, who are these people? Where are they going? Whatever, I don't know. Is that a fair way to say that? Like, they're just like, we, we, these, this looks different. We need to find out what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Okay. Kind of like that, yeah. For a lot of the time they'll just practice their English on us and be like, how are you? And then when I answer, they just think it's great. They're like, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Welcome. And, and I- when we got pulled over, it was like a soldier and some guy in a suit, which is a, a soldier and a guy in a suit. We've seen a lot of that. What are you going? Um, the minaret. What do you see in Iraq? Um, I don't know. What are you from in America? New York. New York? Yeah. Friend? Yeah. <laughs> Not speaking, why? Uh, he, he's answering all the questions right. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Iraq. Thank you so Thank much. You. I appreciate it. So to give an example, not only are they very nice, we're now going into the desert to like a remote part. So not only did they let us go through, obviously, but they've given us an escort and we now have an escort with us. So a lot of the time at the security checkpoints, the cops don't even know that it's visa on arrival yet. So they're like, how are they, how are these foreigners here? And they're like, it's visa on arrival. And they're like, we have that? And they're like, yes. And then they have to explain it to them, it's this whole thing. So it's still like very new and it's still a process that they're getting used to. Um, but yesterday when we visited Samara, it was like very, very intense security. Not all checkpoints were created equal. The road to Samara has always been a high security area. The entire road from Baghdad to Samara was part of the notorious Triangle of Death and was controlled by ISIS not too long ago. It's fine to drive on now, but security is still a little tighter. Ahmed was telling me what it was like when ISIS was in the area. They tried to get in Samara too, right? Uh, they were in Samara, like really? near, near Samara. Samara's home to one of the coolest UNESCO sites in the world, which I'll show you a little later. But getting there is just slightly more intense than visiting most parts of Iraq. It was still completely fine, but we just spent a lot of time sitting at checkpoints, even with Aya and Ahmed there. They actually take your passports when you enter the city and give them back to you when you leave. I never thought I would say the sentence, and people back home seem to think this sounds crazy, but it feels good to be back in Baghdad. <laughs> right now, you can visit all of Iraq. Tourists even visit Mosul. But just a few years ago, most of the roads that led north were controlled by ISIS, including the roads to Suleimania, where Aya and Ahmed live. He just climbed over that, scared the shit out of me, dude. So like we had to use a flight. Oh my god! So you couldn't, you couldn't even drive on it if you wanted, no, or no, what? No. Back in 2018, we started like. So, what, but if you like. There was just no road at all, or if you tried to drive, you would get in trouble? Not like, there is road, but like, there's no checkpoints, it's all ISIS controlling the area. Got it, got it, got it. Were people freaked out a little? Well, yes, of course, like, they were taking people, killing some of them, yeah. like... You're seeing how cool and adjusted all these people are, but like, for example, mm -hmm. like, Aya, she lived here, right, in Iraq, and when things got, like, pretty dicey here, she moved to Syria. And when she moved there, that started. And then when she left there, she moved back to Mosul. And then she had to escape from Mosul. Like this poor girl is bringing war with her everywhere she goes. And like, let's look at her. Look at her thriving, being awesome. But I can't help but wonder if they worry from a business perspective that like, will Iraq remain this stable in the future? Do you, do you worry that things will become unstable? Of course, yeah, but we cannot like, sit and do nothing because maybe things will be unstable. Like, even if we need to were, take were like unstable, it will not be the whole area. There, no, yeah. there will still be places we can go to. Got it. Maybe we cannot go to Samara, but we can still do this out. Right. So like we will do this alternative. If we, it, yeah, if that. not the south, the north. Right. But I'm not going to leave this country. Never. <laughs> Thinking about the guys who made all the trouble. Thinking about the guys who made all the trouble. They ignore what they are doing. They ignore what they are doing. They ignore what they are doing. <laughs> Do you love me? Do you, 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 do you,
want me. Nice to meet you. Do you love me? Hi, I'm Julio. Nice to meet you. How are you? Thanks. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it. Ahmed took us to meet his family, which was really nice. They were super sweet. <laughs> Met his sisters, his grandma, his grandfather. I know, I know. <laughs> little, little mustache. <laughs> That's a good stuff. <laughs> How old are you there? 12? Look I good, don't know. Dude. I don't remember. That's a better mustache than I have now. And that's his? <laughs> No, that's not his father. Yeah, this is my father. Oh, yeah, nice. that's this is my mother. Very nice. And this my two sisters. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Julia. How are you? I like your outfit. You look cool. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. How are you guys doing? Good. Good? This is, um, we've been hanging out with your brother all week. He's a good guy. You like him? You're Very good. So what's up? After being welcomed into this nice family's home, I started to feel guilty that I had lied to my parents about where I was. I told my parents that I was going to Mesopotamia, which is in modern-day Iraq. When they got suspicious, I told them I was in Qatar. The guilt wasn't just about the fact that I was lying, but it also just felt rude to these nice people. The idea that to people in America, their home is too dangerous for people to visit or something. That's okay. I'll put it, I'll put it. It's gigantic for us. So I know I told you guys that my parents think I'm in Qatar, but what I, I didn't tell you is that <laughs> to, sh to shoot stuff, to kind of like do like an ancient, like Mesopotamia sort of tour situation. Um, what? Yeah. What the f are you talking about? We know the ancient countries you're going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. So where are you going? So like, it's, it, I think it's kind of like, uh, you know, we're going to be in Qatar. <laughs> Why are you trying to make this easier? Just say, I'm going away for a week to Kuwait and Qatar. And you're probably going other places, but you're not telling me where you're going. It's unclear at the moment. How do you, how do you not know where you're going? <laughs> I, I, know, I, I know. You know, I'm sure mom is not going to be thrilled, but... Well, that didn't go as well as I'd hoped. <laughs> oh, God. I just got a text from my mom. She said, you want to kill me, don't you, question mark. Oh my god, dude, that's heartbreaking. All right, let's call my mom. God damn it. Hey, I, I have never would have loved, want, there's no one I want to kill less than you. <laughs> Listen, I would think dad getting a pilot's license is worse than anything I've ever done. He's not gonna get it, he's full of it, Julia. You know, the more we've hung out, I feel bad that I even told you that story because it's like, because you said earlier, like, wow, Americans, like, they must think... It's like a nightmare. They don't know Iraq They don't know the bright side of Iraq. They right. don't know, like... Yeah. They always connected with, with war, with what, like, what right. happened, with the media. Right. So they don't know what we have, but, like, the ancient sites, the people, the food. Like, some of them think, like, once you get out of the airport, you will be kidnapped, like... Yeah. Come on. Like, but imagine, like, not even a single checkpoint, like, cause the trouble or, like, ask a specific thing. Or, yeah. Like, it's all welcoming. Yeah. It's picture, all easy. Saying yeah. hi, trying to practice their English with you. You said this too. People ask, they'll be like, make sure our guide isn't yeah. a terrorist. I mean, if you don't stress the one you are coming with, don't come. Don't come. Yeah. Don't come. <laughs> 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 and a lot of people in Iraq, they do their vacation, the families, you yeah, know, yeah, in yeah. Karbala and Najaf. It's like going to With Disney World. Peaceful, yeah. yeah. You have to see Karbala. <laughs> and you can see this old lady who's just sad because of her young kid who's just like dead. Yeah. Just... It's amazing. In the West, like, people are are intimidated when, when they see people wearing all black like right, this. Right. That image is not like that here. It's the mother, that's the mother. Exactly, that's, that's the, the mother. mother. It's so funny to see it in like that light only where it's like this is this uh, sympathetic figure. Because in the West, people are scared of that right, outfit. Right, exactly. It was refreshing to get a new POV on Muslim attire. In the holy city of Karbala, which is maybe the only city I've ever been to that has a dress code, women are required to wear a hijab and men have to wear pants. I met this guy, Hassan, who worked at the hotel we stayed at. And we've actually stayed in touch. We'll like send each other voice notes and stuff. Hey, 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 how are you? What's going on? Everything is okay, everything is good. How was your trip? 
Not to sound ignorant, but I would have never thought a guy who looked like this could talk in such perfect colloquial English. Just reminded me not to make assumptions about people. The old phrase came to mind, don't judge a book by its cover. And Karbala is a great place to put that theory to the test. Is this busy like this? Yes, and like nowadays it's not even busy. And it so used to be like you see only heads of people, or like it's full of people. And is like it, yearly, is sorry, we are talking no, no. yearly, like more than 30 million people visit this at one time. That's crazy. Like at the Ashura, the, the holy month I told you about, mm -hmm. it's at the beginning of the Islamic year, and it's where the, the Imam was killed. So, like millions come, not from Iraq, from the Gulf, from Iran. Yeah. Okay, so is it like fun? Do, like, are people excited to come? Because it uh, looks like... They are excited, but like nothing is fun. Because like it's the memorial it. of, their, of their leader. Right, right. Because I saw it's just like so bright and there's so much stuff. I, I was, that was surprising me. But outside of the shrine did seem pretty fun. It was all bright and shiny and grand. It was like... Disney World meets Vegas, but for religion. The shrine is open every day, 24, seven hours. This door is only for, for women. Yes. So like, we have to take around Got this it. way to, to go from the like, men door. Got it. Because it, it's separated. Right. So they don't, you can't go in together. Does it look the same inside for the men and women? Yes, it's, it's like it, it will be like splitted by. Got it. So, but when you, you can't see them when you're in. They're... No, no, you cannot see them. Incredible in there, like so bright, so clean. They're, they're constantly spraying things to make it smell better. There's some 14 year old kid doing a sermon. This 14 year old kid is just running the show, which is nuts. <laughs> Who is this kid? This kid's got it. This kid's got something. This kid, I tell you. And just like diamonds and gold and people crying putting their hands on the thing. Everybody was kissing the pole on the way in too, which you know, people are not germ freaks here, that's for sure. Uh, but it was like a nice, wholesome, incredibly well-lit, mind-blowing cultural experience. While Iraq is rich with tradition, there's definitely a modern side too, where you can kind of do all the stuff you might do in any big city. Before I left Baghdad, I wanted to make sure that I took a look at some of the new Iraqi national soccer team gear, because I heard it was sick. Let's get some drip. I like the black one. The black is the hardest for sure. You gotta, I think you gotta go with the black. USA medium. I need the USA XL. Oh boy. All right, look. Oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> is it good? Yeah, it's good. You look good. I think so. I was flirting with the girl. I was not. She was flirting with me. Yeah, she has a crush on you. <laughs> she was like saying to the other guy, oh my god, he's so cute. <laughs> I love it. International appeal. Yeah. I found that in every big city I've ever been to, there's always at least one area where young people can do the same stuff anywhere in the world. And Baghdad was no different. Check out this Friends Cafe. Did not expect to see this in Baghdad. Stop taking pictures. They also had a bunch of very cool sort of Brooklyn style coffee shops too. 
I actually posted a picture of this particular one on my Instagram story, seeing if people could guess where I was. Obviously no one guessed Iraq. People were guessing stuff like Sweden, Germany, Iceland. <laughs> and it wasn't one of those things either where like they build it, but people don't use it, you know, to make it look like the city's popping. These shops were filled with young people working on their computers. This is a spot where like young Iraqi students come to work for free, study and stuff, hang out. It's a good little vibe. This place, Cafe 650, is the same place that owned the other one I just showed you. The barista here was actually so proud of his work that he felt the need to airdrop me a video of him making some kind of espresso drink. Uh, there's another room that we're not allowed to film in, but they give space to people mm. who like have startups, and it's basically you can like it's a shared workspace. It's like a WeWork kind of situation, which is really dope. Um, and the other really dope thing is that I and Ahmed met here. Yes. yes. Oh, so cute. So is this bringing back? Is this bringing back the butterflies yeah. for you guys or what? <laughs> but like in terms of seeing my ex crush, not like the memories with that. <laughs> <laughs> crush here as well yeah. but he's not here as far as i looked hello 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 we went to an italian restaurant in iraq dude he thinks that's the greatest thing he's ever had it was pretty good cheers cheers <laughs> yeah. in case you were wondering there are bars in baghdad and it's not just for foreigners since Iraq doesn't really get a ton of foreigners to begin with, it's primarily locals. We went to this one cool spot where you can play video games, watch sports, and play pool. Apparently I'm not very good. Oopsie. Aya and Ahmed were pretty solid though. Ah, I did it! Yes, 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 yes. A shot. In what is apparently becoming my trademark fire. move in other countries, I challenged Ahmed to a game of FIFA. Unsurprisingly, Aya was not rooting for me. You are already losing. I'm not losing. I just had a good little. Yalla Ahmed. Yalla 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 yalla. Ahmed, Ahmed. Oh. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. 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 Big goal. Big goal. That's the end. We have been going nonstop. So we decided to take the night off and get a little downtime and relaxation at the local spa. I decided to get the full three-step treatment. Step one was getting buried in hot salt with a shovel. Ahmed was loving it too. <laughs> Next, some guy fully exfoliates your entire body with these little mitts. The final step, a very intense deep tissue massage by this big guy who used to be on the Iraqi national wrestling team. The disco lighting was just weirding me out a little bit, so I asked him to turn the lights on. Iraqi cities are also filled with tons of traditional markets and old school architecture to go along with all the new modern stuff. The same thing, it's super old. It looks like, years. like Aladdin, right? Like a jumping around on the rooftop situation. These are the type of bazaars that I expected to see in the Middle East. Just people selling pretty much anything. I wanted to try to grab a gift for my girlfriend. Wait, I wanted... Like this? I wanted to get this, but Aya says it's ugly. It's ugly. Hillary, it's what ugly. do you think? <laughs> <laughs> this one is better. Yeah, one's better. Yeah, we can get that. As I walked down the streets of Baghdad. <laughs> Let's see what your girlfriend say about this. She, uh, she'd be upset, 
if I be, if I started smoking regularly again, I think if I have one interaction, I'll be okay with it. I always say Ahmed is bad influence. <laughs> So wait, okay, what did the guy say about if we don't like this? If you don't like it, just bring your family and fight us. What? <laughs> That's very so confident. Funny. That's very funny. I like Let's that try. confidence now. That's very good. That's so good, bro. It's the hate. I made it to all the Done. Insanely good. That was really good too. So much food, holy shit. You might have noticed Abu Haider with the fly haircut here. This seems to be the prevailing haircut among men in Iraq. Yeah. The bros. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see the haircuts? <laughs> Everywhere. Dude, it's incredible. The hair, waking up with the hair perfect. Your hair is perfect, bro. How does he do it? How do you do it? The cut. Hey. So the guy says, keep, keep doing this. Hold your hand, okay? Yeah. Don't break your bones. Just like this, okay? Middle finger, only middle finger. And the others here, just hold it, hold it like a gun. Okay? Don't like do it like this. No. Keep <laughs> it's hard. Fuck. <laughs> I can't I can't do this thing either. I can't do like I Sajad can't was telling me how he's pretty politically active. Oh, he was also very involved in the Iraqi Cultural Revolution of 2019. And we changed the, the system of the elections. Amazing. Wow. And for me, uh, after four years from now, I'm gonna go to the elections. <laughs> I'm gonna rock it, bro. Hell yeah, dude. You got my vote, dude. Habibi. You got my vote. There it is, the Ferris wheel. <laughs> you want to try it? Is it open? I will ask. You can see it's super old. This is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be positive, guys. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> we have to be. <laughs> That's funny. What was the most dangerous thing you saw in Iraq? The, the Ferris wheel. There, from this side, you know, mm -hmm. you'll see Saddam's ballast. He yeah. have four ballasts here, uh, up next to, next to each other. One of them just for his guests. Guests, wow. sorry for his friends or something from prison or something. So when I, I'm gonna be a dictator, you're gonna have a ballast in Basra. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the good thing here. <laughs> yeah, man, awesome. And I'm gonna uh, stay in a hotel or something? No, yeah. a ballast. We make the wealth, the wealth and the corruption <laughs> got to you, dude. <laughs> Saddam famously built one of his summer palaces overlooking the ancient city of Babylon. On the way to the palace, we stopped to check out the city. Babylon. They rebuilt it, like the foundation is the original, and then they actually just re Saddam, I guess, rebuilt it all, which I think that's a cool idea. Mm. 
Like, it's much better than having to just see a picture of what it would have looked like. You might as well just fucking build it. Who cares if it looks new and, it isn't, or, and it's not ancient or whatever. He was trying to honor Iraq's great heritage by rebuilding Babylon. But I'm sure it didn't hurt that he was creating a sick view for his summer home. In the lower left part of your screen, that's supposedly where the hanging gardens of Babylon were. Historians are unsure whether or not the gardens actually existed, but according to Meki, they would have been right around here. Was he nice? Saddam's palace. Saddam was ballin'. This isn't even his house. This is his summer house. This is his Hamptons house. This is Saddam's Hamptons house. You guys know about the Hamptons? Dude, he just must have thrown unbelievable parties here. Did he throw good parties? What? Did he yes, throw parties? <laughs> First city in the world. First actually, everything. Actually, in the world. this is actually the first city in the world. So, uh, this city was. Uh... Iraq is home to some of the most ancient sites on the planet. This is what most of the new wave of tourists are coming here to see. Iraq is in the heart of what was once considered Mesopotamia, which is often referred to as the birthplace of civilization. To give some context, the pyramids were built 4,500 years ago. We visited places that were settled over 7,000 years ago. Rumor has it that the Visa on Arrival program started because the Pope was so impressed when he visited Iraq in 2021 that he was like, guys, people need to see this stuff. This is where Ahmed and Aya plan most of their tours. So obviously we had to check it out. and one of the biggest in Iraq. I brought this can of cola, I don't know what to do with it. You're <laughs> <laughs> cracking, dude. Hell yeah, brother. Let's see it, discover it together. Fuck yeah. Water buffalo! Mm. Oh, they don't say that like that. They don't? <laughs> <laughs> this is a cow, not, not a buffalo. <laughs> it was at that point I found out we were actually planning on camping in the marshes. I don't know how I somehow overlooked that detail when I was looking at the itinerary, but the last time I slept in a tent was when I was like 10 years old. So I wasn't really looking forward to it, but as the old saying goes, when in Iraq, sleep in a tent in the middle of nowhere. Bob, the, uh, Bob Francis, you know, when he came to Iraq in 2021, after that trip in Iraq, he decided to give a recommendation to the government. He said like, why not? That's okay, I awesome. love the people visit Iraq and see all these stuff. So the Pope was just so impressed by Iraq. He's like, you gotta right, let yeah, people come exactly, visit. Exactly, yes, exactly. The yeah. flame in the distance is like some like apocalypse so now good. sort of vibe. Oh, I forgot that there's like all these bodies of water just near Basra. So like the fish market, the fish literally yeah, were, yeah, were caught today. Exactly. You saw it in uh, the morning. Yeah. There's a lot of species. But the one that looked like an alien. What the hell is this? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's like a beast, it's just one yeah. beast. No eyes. What? No eyes. <laughs> just this giant. What the heck? It literally it was silver too, like an alien. It looked like yes. an alien, dude. Can you see this fish? They are just dried it with the, with the salt. Oh, cool. They call it masmuta. This is the special meal in Iraq, especially in the south. Sick. You know? I hate it because it's smelly. <laughs> From the sea for you to see. <laughs> There's something nice about being in nature and being on the natural schedule, too. You fucking wake up when the sun comes up. Mm -hmm. 
I always wonder that too. About babies. Like you know the way babies wake up at the exact same time? Mm. Is the fact that is that just us in our purest form, meaning like our it was supposed to be like that, but society is like you know mm. such a camping thought. <laughs> Something about camping just makes you get deep with your boys. Mm. Instagram, Facebook, and all the social media. Uh, people sometimes use it in a bad way, or just addic- keep being addicted and something mm. for, for the social media. Uh, want, want to be in like a good shape or something perfect. Right, right. Okay, with the perfect <laughs> pictures and stuff. Like I used to do this. I used to do this before. Like when I'm when I was a teenager or something. Yeah. I want I want to be perfect. Mm-hmm. But I realized that. Nobody's perfect. I, I just want to be myself. Yeah. So when I'm being myself, okay, a lot of people like this. Yeah. Okay. You're so a star, wh- why dude. not? Yeah. You're a star. <laughs> I'm telling you, this guy's a fucking star. You are the star. Yeah. No, no, no. Marsh Bay. This guy's a stud. He's a good looking dude. He's How talented. Does. He's talented. He knows everything about the marshes. And he's and he's he's got a good he's got a good jawline. Yeah. Oh wow, he's a pro. <laughs> he's the master. Fucking Marsh Bay, dude. <laughs> Guy's an absolute legend. You're calling him Marsh Bay. He looks like a model. Before I left Iraq, Aya and Ahmed had a surprise in store for me. Now look, I love a good prank, but they have a higher threshold for what's considered an appropriate prank compared to what I'm used to back home. Ahmed was the mastermind behind this particular prank. And I should have been more prepared when the day before he was explaining a good one that he plays on Aya, where he'll like change the time on her phone to an hour or two later. Don't change it. He's so evil. This was nothing compared to what they had in store for me. Oh my fucking God, dude. They just pranked us so fucking bad. You have no idea. They, we show up, that was such a good prank, you guys. Are you serious? We show up to the car, they're both wearing masks. That goes. Are they wearing, they wearing masks? I was like, fuck. Thank you, oh boy. We have a bad news. Oh no. Hey guys. We have to go to the testing center again. Oh shit. One of you are positive and one needs to do the testing again. Who is positive and who's negative? You. I'm positive? Yeah. Fuck. I was like, and they go, it's gonna take at least two weeks, you're gonna have to quarantine. It might take like two weeks or like. Really? Yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna miss Thanksgiving. I'm gonna miss the Oops Live show. Francis is gonna kill me. My life just like flashed in front of my eyes. I was like, I'm fucked. And then they let us sit in it too. I would be fucked, so fucked. God damn it. And Ahmed goes, I have the cuff. What's up? I, like I'm cuffing a lot. Yeah. We have another tour in five days and right. we will be fucked. Guys, it's a prank. You are negative. You are guys. negative. <laughs> oh my god. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. My fucking god, dude. Oh, god. This was oh my, my god. Was <laughs> you motherfuckers. <laughs> we are sorry, it's negative. <laughs> Fuck you, you guys. <laughs> yeah, for real. We were planning to make it longer, like at the yeah, longer lap. I told my you to That is the best prank I've ever had played oh, on me in my life, dude. God. To me, I'm gonna be honest, Zach. I was I was just thankful that it was me and not you. That's very sweet. You're welcome. I mean it, because I didn't want you to have to be fucked and have to sit here by yourself and I get to go back. So Love you, dude. You're welcome. <laughs> Unbelievable, guys. <sighs> okay, so you guys are doing this incredible thing. You started this company. You're bringing eye, new eyes to Iraq. They never would have seen them before. You you said to me earlier, you're like, I hope that people uh, can see what Iraq is really like. What are your goals for what the, your, the work that you guys are doing? So here is the story. Uh, we were thinking that we thought that we are changing how foreigners see Iraq, but we ended up uh, changing how Iraqi people see Iraq. Oh wow! You know. And and I hope that. I hope to. I mean, I really hope to come back here. I mean, don't get me wrong. Just because we're here, we're having a chill time. I'm not suggesting that these people haven't been through a lot. 
like Ahmed even said that there's a saying here that like every person has lost somebody here. And, you know, even though it's you know relatively normal at the moment, um, there's still security checkpoints and heightened security and all that stuff. Um, but having said that, I have not felt unsafe for a single moment on this entire trip. And I know even Mr. Oh, I'm gonna go there and it's gonna be normal guy. You know what I mean? I still did not, I wasn't sure. It was intimidating drive from the airport. I just, I, I had no, absolutely no idea. And people have been very warm, very welcoming. Uh, and it's been wonderful. And I just hope that the people here can have a great rest of their lives. And I hope the future is bright for them because it's a wonderful place that has a lot to offer. And uh, I think you should come visit. Sous-titrage 